we're going to look at today is how to do something called a net ionic equation. And eventually, we're going to learn why you should care about them. Today, we're just learning what they are. So whenever you have a reaction that takes place, all the uh, elements and compounds react in such a way that they create products that are, are more stable and lower in energy. You've heard the term soluble before. Soluble means it can dissolve in a liquid, and usually that liquid is water. So a term that um, you've seen before, aqueous or aqueous, you could say it either way, means that your chemical has been dissolved in water. But not everything dissolves in water. Only some things do. So to decide why some things dissolve in water and why others do not has to do with the bonding that's taking place within the substance. Um, so down below, there's a picture of uh, ionic compound potassium chloride dissolving in water. And we're going to try and figure out why potassium chloride can dissolve in water. You might remember the term electronegativity from our bonding chapter. Electronegativity measures how strongly atoms pull on their electrons in a bond. And if you were to compare the electronegativity of oxygen versus hydrogen, oxygen pulls more strongly on the electrons than the hydrogen atoms do in a water molecule. And as a result, the oxygen part of a water molecule develops a slight negative charge, not a full-on anion style where it takes an electron, uh, but the electrons lean that way. So the oxygen part is slightly negative. And the hydrogen part, since its electrons are being pulled away from it, is slightly positive. Water is a polar substance. That's another way of saying that. Well, if you bring an ionic substance next to a polar substance, potassium chloride is ionic. It's made up of a metal and a nonmetal, and metals tend to give up their electrons and become cations. Nonmetals tend to take on electrons and become anions in an ionic bond. And so the positive hydrogen parts of a water molecule are attracted to the negative chloride part of the KCl. This attraction pulls apart the KCl into K plus and Cl minus ions. And the same thing happens with that oxygen being attracted to the positive part of the KCl. Basically, the water goes in and, and pulls that uh, potassium chloride crystal apart. The splitting of KCl into potassium ions and chloride ions is what happens when something dissolves. So the KCl starts as this big uh, crystal, and then as the water molecule comes in and pulls it apart, so you could see those positive hydrogens attracted to the negative chloride, and the negative oxygens attracted to the positive potassium. Basically, these water molecules go in and attack our big potassium chloride crystal, and eventually it pulls it apart into such tiny little pieces that your eyes can no longer see the KCl in the beaker anymore. And so it seems to magically disappear, but all that's really happening when something dissolves is that the water is pulling it apart into pieces that are too small for your eyes to detect. Here's another example showing what happens with sodium chloride when we put that guy in water. So you can see this ionic crystal of sodium ions and chloride ions. The sodium ones are the green ones, the chloride ions are the purple. If we were to take that sodium chloride and put it in water, the water molecules go in and attack that sodium chloride crystal and break it up into tiny little pieces. So our negative oxygen from our water molecule is attracted to the positive sodium ion, and then the positive hydrogen parts of our water molecule are attracted to the negative chloride ion. What basically happens is the cations and the anions are surrounded by water molecules. They kind of have this little protective bubble of water around them. Uh, the official name for those is hydration spheres. And since each of these ions is now surrounded by this little protection of a water bubble, it makes it difficult for the sodium and chloride ions to come back together and recombine. So when we put salt in water, we can't see it anymore. It dissolves. It's aqueous. So whenever something's aqueous, what does that mean if it's being dissolved in water? It means that it's broken up into its ions. 
In other words, it's not NaCl together if it's aqueous. It's Na plus and Cl minus apart.